Greetings, friends. And so we come together again in our circle. Joining under the energies of Sagittarius New Moon, which will occur in a few hours from now. Today we meet in a circle to bring the seeds from our work in the last couple of weeks since the full moon. Seeds of our reflection on the topic, the will to unify relationship through fiery hearts. Before we proceed, I invite Brigitte to sound the statement of purpose for our work. Our purpose is to magnetize the ideas of common good, freedom, and brotherhood as the highest values of humanity at this time. We recognize and cherish diversity of perspectives in our group, creating a space capable of invoking, receiving, interpreting, and radiating a higher synthetic vision. We serve as an Islamic outpost, building a group bridge of Buddhic energy. We evoke the soul of humanity. We envision humanity as being the seed that is flowering. We prepare the way for the reappearance of the common one. And over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Brigitte. We'll now join together through the naming circle. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name, and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. Hello, friends. This is Alexander Ilchuk calling in from Brooklyn, New York, in the United States. Welcome. Brigitte. Greetings. This is Birgitte Rasmussen calling in from Slaelse in Denmark. Welcome. Judy. 
Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Judy Harrison from Brewster, Massachusetts, USA. Welcome. Helen. Hello, uh, Helen Franklin. I'm calling from the UK uh, in Hertfordshire, near London. Welcome. Victoria. Hello, this is uh, Maria Victoria calling from uh, Tuscany in Italy. Welcome. Melanie. Hello, I'm Melanie calling from France. Welcome. Jillian. Hello, I'm Gillian Douglas from Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Martha. Hello, everyone. I'm Martha, living in Victoria, Canada. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, friends. We continue our work that we started at the time of the full moon, holding in our group, Chalice, the topic of our work it related to the science of the mutable cross. right relationship and harmonization in all fields of human endeavors. And the topic in our focus is the will to unify relationship through fiery hearts. On the screen now, you can see the questions that um, were offered for us to for reflection in this cycle. And we invite us now to resume our sharing where we left it at during our quarter moon meeting last week, bringing in other thoughts and most resonant seeds from our sharings, preparing for our meditation that will, will bring our sharing consummation 
when we will offer our seeds into the group chalice for to be magnetized and radiated through meditation. And so now we open in our circle for sharing. When you are ready, please unmute yourself. And as we listen to each other, let's recognize the most resonant ideas to bring them to our circle in our meditation. I will read the questions again. How the principle of right relationships is able to transform conflict into harmony. Let us hold a vision of reconstruction that will follow this period of crisis. Using the energies available through Gemini Sagittarius axis and the esoteric rulers Venus and Earth at this time, how can these energies be used to direct the aspiration of the Sagittarian arrows? The Earth play a vital role in this cycle of Sagittarius as it aligns with the sign and the moon, producing a unique combination of energies available to us. How can the rider upon its horse synthesize these energies for the will to good? Hey, I guess I'll start. <laughs> um, just making things, trying to make things simple in a very complex and convoluted <laughs> world right now and looking at these questions and trying to answer them as simply as possible for me. Um, I started with the first question, uh, you know, the principle of right relations and transforming uh, conflict into harmony. And how are we going to do that during, I mean, how can that be done during this time period with the Gemini Sagittarius axis? axis? Um, and of course, we're talking about unity through fiery hearts. But I think the most important thing in resolving relationships is not only coming from the heart chakra, but open communication, which heart chakra is through, um, you know, indiscrimination, just um, not, or not um, non-judgment, that type of thing. And I think we talked about that before, of course, it falls under the booty and, and love. Um, the second question, using the energies available through this Sagittarius and Gemini, or Gemini Sagittarius axis, and using the planetary energies, um, 
I think the arrows that are reaching targets, the arrows themselves should be that which is, call it the, the love arrow, the Cupid type, but not Cupid. But, you know, I get that vision of the little angel with the arrow. And the arrow, it, which represents, or the love, which represents Venus and the earth energy through active intelligence. So obviously transforming and moving the arrow of love through active intelligence. So using the two basic, um, again, very simply put, energies of Venus being love, Earth being active intelligence. And then the third question uh, about um, the Earth's role right now and, and with the alignment that we're in right now with Sagittarius aligning with the sun and the moon, I think the rider um, or the soul is trying to synthesize the gifts, which would be the sun, representing our sun. Again, very simple. Our gifts, and then with the moon, our responses um, in right action, again, through active intelligence. So I tried to take those three questions and put them in very simple, simple terms of how we can, what, what can be cherry picked, so to speak, from the energies that are available right now to us, to unify us um, through our fiery hearts into right relationships. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Tracy, for putting it simply, because that seems to be the only way I can take this in, because the second question I couldn't really honestly make too much of, but I had a little re read about Venus today, and it is closely related with Earth, and I know it is the planet of love, and that um, the people from Venus... I can't remember the name of them, Radiant somethings or the others, I think, or the People of Light or something, did come down at one time to help Earth in its evolution. And I would imagine that this particular time they will be again having some input in our progress. Thanks. I would like to address the first question. What, what, for some time now, not just this this month, or, um, the relationship with the etheric is what keeps um, coming into my mind. And I think this right relationship has also to do with the relationship between the etheric physical and the dense physical. And that has something to do with conflict and the harmony. And there's a tendency to conflict in the dense bodies. And there seems to me a, a, a greater... Um, ease to sense harmony in, in the quality of the etheric. I also am impressed by our etheric reflecting the um, etheric, the, the first etheric of the cosmic 
man, the, the, the greater sort of being of which we are a part. And that is the, the buddhic plane, which is to do with love and, and this idea of the fiery heart. I think the vision of the reconstruction that will follow this period of crisis, I think this vision is in the etheric. It is the ability to um, see the light behind or within all, all forms and to see that buddhic light or that uh, hierarchical Christ light reflecting from the buddhic in, into the etheric and that um, right relationship again between the the two I I'm trying at home to tidy up some papers which is not the easiest of thing I I just I, I sometimes just find bits that I have typed out at some point and they've obviously um, impressed me and I just had this sheet here which I think links in with what I'm I'm feeling this 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 month. As our awareness of light increases, so does the apparatus of vision develop and the mechanism by whereby we can see things in spiritual light comes into being in the etheric body. By means of the eye of vision or the third eye, the spiritual person sees behind the forms aspects of divine expression. He becomes aware of the light of the world and contacts the soul within all forms. Just as a physical eye registered forms, registers forms, so does a spiritual eye register the illumination within those forms which illumination indicates a specific state of being. It opens up the world of radiance. And that to me is that vision of the reconstruction that will follow this awful crisis that is going on around us. It is opening up the world of radiance. Thank you. Helen, where did that reading come from? Uh, that's white magic. Thank you. It, it, I even wrote down the page, uh, 213. So in contemplating these questions <clears throat> in this period, I began with asking myself, how do I register my place in the principle of right relationship? And I began with this notion of my own participation in any kind of tribal thinking whether it be over identification in my family, my friendships, in my country, um, in my own biases in terms of that which I would like to see happen in the world. And it took me to a different level of silence in that I somehow found that we, they uh, have it in my brain, ease. And it took me to a higher step because the question of uh, understanding, first of all, the relationship with Venus and Earth and Earth, Sun and Moon, and yet these things are real. 
uh, it, it, I realize the, the new understanding of what we mean by group and recognized my old tendency to think of groups as conglomerates, lots of individuals. And what I realized was the importance of registering the fact that consciousness, the evolution of consciousness only happens in group through our service. So the, when I got to the rider upon the horse, they disappeared. And what I saw was the arrow, the bow, shooting a golden arrow. <clears throat> and recognizing the new relationship with hierarchy itself. It, it reinforces what I heard Helen say, which is that it isn't any longer a question of our imagining our collaboration with hierarchy. It is really up to us to see that harmonization occurs. And I do believe at this time we have the skills. So I thank you for this time to contemplate fiery hearts for me now stands for harmonizing humanity's will with humanity's capacity to love. Um, hello, good afternoon. This is Lynn. Um, thanks, everybody, for the wonderful ideas um, and for this opportunity to take part once again. Um, this was an important uh, um, month for me. Um, and uh, some things came through at different levels, but mostly um, pretty directly, um, and it's, I think, related again to everyone, what everyone said. Uh, Helen, what you were, when you were talking about the etheric body, um, I also had a, a really unusual experience for me that I think is related to the uh, overlapping that we're all experiencing etherically, a sort of the, or the closeness that we're all experiencing. Um, I was meditating a little one morning a few days ago, and uh, my mom passed away in 2017, a, a woman I loved very much, very lovely woman, and she um, came to me. I hadn't been thinking about her. I hadn't been awake for very long, and she came to me, and um, I realized after a few seconds that she was in me. I realized that sense of her within me as her. Um, we were seemingly really overlapped, and I even could see where my left side ended and hers kept going, and, and I realized kind of instantaneously some of the wonderful gifts she'd given me and found myself saying, but I have to live my own life, Mom. <laughs> and, um, and then at the same, as that happened, I realized that there was a soul contact a true soul contact in that. And, and it was a way of me being at one somehow, I don't understand it totally, at one with my own soul, but realizing too that since she's passed away physically, that she lives in me at a lot of levels. Um, 
my vision of what she was as opposed to what she really was and so forth. But anyway, that was one thing that I'm sure it has to do with etheric energy and um, how walls are, the walls are dissipating between people and between um, everything, between those concrete walls are, are um, becoming porous um, because of our ability to sense etherically. Also, in another vein, um, I thought about that first question right away. I was drawn to that. How the, how, the, how the principle of right relationships is able to transform conflict into harmony. And it came to me that um, the number three, uh, Martha, was really important. And I was kind of left with that after you spoke the last meeting we had. Um, and talking about education, how that third uh, element was so important in the relationship between teacher and student. And I think that third element has to do more with will and focus. And maybe that's what you were saying. Um, that's what, it's that purpose. Actually, it's the purpose that allows teacher and student to come together and communicate. Um, but as far as the third question goes, um, I came up with a three-part statement. Um, number one, through correct uh, sense of self and our place in a wider societal context, that's how um, we'll be able to transform conflict into harmony, harmony um, a right sense of self in our place. Number two, through common understanding and use of effective techniques for interaction and communication. Um, so that takes it to the next level. And then three, through common purpose and a vision of the plan. And I know, again, that's way simpler than the subtle things that other subtler things were saying, but I think that's got a clarity to it that helps me um, define um, how can we how can we transform conflict into harmony? And it gives us as a society, as societies, things to work on and things that I know are being worked on um, through education and through education at all ages and through um, work that people do in the uh, material world. Um, uh, then I also ta thought about question two some, and I, I actually did some reading in, this, in the um, esoteric astrology. And it seems like a lot of what he was saying in that is just that, um, let me see here. How can, it, he put it better than I did. DK did. Let's see if I can find it here. I wrote some of it down. Um, the idea of Sagittarius um, seems to be an expansion of consciousness and going from um, the more mutable to the fixed cross. And um, he said to express love wisdom through expansion of consciousness and our limitation uh, and initiations. Um, and he says going from after Scorpio, going from um, a focus on mind to a focus on intu intuition. And he put it, travels on the wing, aspiration that travels on the wings of the soul. Um, anyway, um, DK came, seemed to be saying Sagittarius at the, at the higher level should bring us to discipleship. And um, Gemini is the force which produces changes needed 
for the evolution of Christ consciousness at any particular point in time and space. So those combination of en combination that combination of energies seems very very special and very much um, involved in the pr progress of humanity um, and very much um, through those signs we have an opportunity. The world has opportunities that are are certainly what we hope for. Okay, thank you. I also been reflecting on this uh, triangle that Lynn uh, mentioned that uh, um, Marta you offered us last time for reflection. Yeah, man. holding the purpose as a third point uh, between the student and a teacher, and uh, in a way that triangle can be uh, uh, recognized uh, also in any situation of conflict where the two opposites are uh, presented. What is the higher point? What is the purpose of uh, what is the aspiration of both sides? And how to find that point of uh, high aspiration where both sides can meet. So in a way, that's the, a way to, to come to harmony. And it sounds very lofty, reality of conflicts are very dense and intense and uh, but it's interesting that yeah if to for those of us who stand outside of any particular uh, conflicts if we can hold that intention of finding the common purpose finding the common aspiration if that can become a magnetic point for those who are actually in conflict. And it's interesting also to think about uh, Sagittarius, uh, Gemini, uh, opposites, uh, this axis of energies where the esoteric ruler for this science are uh, uh, Earth and Venus. And we know from esoteric astrology that Venus uh, is the uh, alter ego for uh, Earth. So it's uh, that higher point of aspiration that uh, inspires humanity, that invisible presence of archetypical perfection, which is not possible on earth, but its presence creates that magnet that uh, in a way creates that uh, sense of purpose and where the arrows Sagittarian arrows are 
are aiming to. And in a way, it's the same uh, idea, we can see the same idea when um, we read um, messages uh, that Decay was sending during the the hardest part of the Second World War, when he the war was just getting into its most, the ugliest forms of manifestation in the physical plane. In, in, in 1940, Decay already was writing about the need for disciples to focus on the period of reconstruction that will necessarily will follow uh, the period of uh, destruction on the physical plane. So it's that holding that focus on the period of reconstruction, it's in a way like aligning with the any archetypical energy of Venus where perfection resides. So if we hold our focus on that period of reconstruction that will necessarily will come after the current period of crisis and conflict, that can create that magnetic pool for Sagittarian arrows to be aimed to. standing with our two feet on the ground, being fully physically anchored and conscious of the conflict raging now on the planet and feeling the pain, yet to hold the focus on that higher point of perfection and holding it as a magnet to where we collectively can aim I think uh, part of the reconstruction when the conflict ends has to take into account how future conflicts might be avoided. And I was just thinking that usually the majority of people don't start the conflict. It's one sometimes or a few people that decide to start the conflict. I mean, it was the... Um, terrorist group, the leaders, etc., that start it, but then it's the people who suffer. So somehow or the other, I think things have to be reconstructed in a way where ordinary people have more say as to whether their country gets involved in conflict. I hear us <clears throat> together registering the sea thought of a new type of collective of organizing ourselves in a way that we listen to the higher voice, not always the one in authority a new kind of authority that proceeds from the buddhic plane.
Hi, this is Judy. Um, I've been thinking about conflict quite a bit and looking at the fact that um, when you're in true conflict, so is the other. And it brings you to a point where you see yourself in the other. Um, I've been understanding in a way how harmony can come out of that because um, at the lowest point of conflict, when you drill down far enough, basically it, it brings you to a state of uh, oneness, knowing that you are in fact suffering just as the other person is suffering. And you 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 see you see yourself in the other at a point, and I think that's the piece where harmony can come in, um, is to understand that at that most basic level there is a oneness uh, that is being shared. Um, when I thought of the second question, uh, it really struck me that Venus and Earth are both esoteric rulers. And while uh, Venus, um, we know, stands in some ways as the soul of Earth, yet when you look at Gemini, Earth is also the hierarchical ruler over Venus. And I thought of the relationship actually between Shambhala and humanity and how Shambhala in some ways needs humanity to be able to express its principles. And the principle we're looking at here is right relationship. Um, and so there is no high or there is no low. It, it brings back the idea that uh, we grow through relationship, we express through relationship and that there is relationship on uh, every level. It's just an interesting thing to think about Venus and earth in that way. Um, and the fact even that uh, Mars is the hierarchical ruler of um, Sagittarius, again, um, being a warrior on that highest level of um, bringing forth, I don't know, even know how to say this, the, the desire, if you will, um, to move in a way that uh, has the highest quality uh, beyond soul, the monadic quality uh, to bring forth and to stand for something. Um, so just looking at how things can, at one level, um, be perceived in one way, but as we move and experience, uh, it turns things a little bit uh, around and almost on their heads. And, you know, maybe that's why we um, are a, a system where we have to learn harmony through conflict. Yeah, I keep thinking it's it's all about resolution, everything, um, resolving these issues, resolving everything, and ultimately um, creating the marriage between um, the spiritual and physical, or as William Blake put it, uh, marriage between heaven and hell. And um, I think when Helen was talking about the etheric world and how there's a there's a lot of conflict and tumultuous times going on right now um and and above that is the astral world and if the astral or the emotional world is in turmoil the physical world becomes in turmoil and i think in these times i think she made a very good um it just made me really uh, struck a chord with me trying to resolve these higher worlds that are within us that we've denied for thousands and thousands of years, um, all of a sudden this veil is thinning and we're having to deal with not just the 
fight and flight of the physical world, but the heart ramifications, the the emotion that goes with it, but the the deep down, um, you know, the the part that really makes us human, that's the 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 spiritual aspect of ourselves, knowing that you know, war really isn't the way, you know, to do it anymore. Um, and people are protesting more as opposed to, you know, I mean, as back in the times way before us, everything was, you know, get your bows and arrows out and start slinging them at each other. I think now these bows and arrows are needing to not aim at each other, but aim upward into these higher worlds that actually we can't deny anymore. And it's even being open to us. Um, you know, if people would pay more attention to what's being taught, you know, through the quantum worlds and that type of thing, if, you know, they don't, not everybody reads Alice Bailey or, or knows the theosophical, um, and, and, and yogic type things, terms and that, but, um, you know, for the, this information is now expanding human consciousness, which is part of Sagittarius, as was mentioned earlier, um, today, uh, this expansion of consciousness is, is huge. And I think what's happening is everything's coming in at us now, all these energies, and we're not knowing how to deal with them. I think Helen made a good point of that with the, you know, coming the con air, the conflict between the etheric and the physical, but I think it's more than that. And I think, um, I think that these Buddhic energies are really starting to pour into this planet. And it's so hard when people have hardened their hearts to try and tough it out and survive in this harsh world to, not just use their emotion anymore, but you know, this, this fiery heart thing is, is really, really big. So anyways, don't want to continue to ramble. Thank you. Um, Tracy, you know, I think there's also a lot of fear and confusion. Um, and there needs to be, it seems like a, some sort of guiding light shining that um, is, um, I, I suppose, though, people find, find the light they need through the struggle. I guess they find the light they need, but I keep trying to picture in my mind like some sort of um, lighthouse for the for the world that um, can stand and draw people to it. And maybe that's what we can create. But um, also I would, I kind of wish there were more words uh, available that people could hear, hear encouragement. Um, I do think though that people find what they need um, because these things are available and more locally. <laughs> um, alrighty, thanks. Uh, you know, as I hear us share, it goes back to perhaps Tracy's opening statement of keeping it simple and to recognize we are the communicators of higher wisdom so that as we develop skill thinking in triadic understanding, which is, you know, the simple thing would be what I think, what the other thinks and experiences, and 
through love, finding the midpoint that's not a compromise, but goes to the core of what each person cares about. And that was what was meant earlier when we talked about purpose. Fiery heart isn't an emotion. It's really the determination to do the work under our noses that needs to be done. I think of that sense of Sagittarius as the little gate leading to Capricorn. And it perhaps that what it means is, is that those of us who call ourselves conscious bearers, consciousness bearers, light bearers, kind of get with the program itself in terms of what uh, Alex was speaking about, participating, finding those special words that Lynn alluded to that are both comforting and transmuting. I do think humanity I, I, stepping into that space, sometimes by deconstructing assumptions that no longer hold and sometimes coming up with brilliant mechanisms, information systems, for example, that truly and deeply rock the boat of uh, what it used to be thought of as having power. It seems to me it's a lot, a lot is happening where the people are taking the power in a very paradoxical way. Um, less on the streets and more as influencers. So this rider on the secret horse and the, the rider on the horse, it, it does willingly disappear itself in the interest of this spacious recognition we're in a new phase. And I have to remind myself frequently something that DK stated uh, very plainly in the Sagittarius section of S. Historic Astrology. Thought is power. Um, I seem to have trouble remembering that. I see the fiery hearts as power also.
Uh, going back to what uh, you were talking about, Martha, about groups of people, I suppose one of the necessities of the group work is that each different member will have a certain thing that pushes their button, as it were, that they are really interested in over other issues. And in that way, many issues can be tackled and with many different views going into it. Yes, yes. It's a living uh, demonstration of ourselves as, as, as an, organi an organism tackling many issues at the same time by distinct entities that together create the combined force for change. I heard you speaking to the Sagittarian love for freedom, the freedom to choose how to give oneself fully. Thank you. Seeing also some uh, synthesis that that is the the group synthesis, and and this is linked with the with the man and the horse, the rider upon the horse is symbolic of the mixture within the group and this synthesis. And reflecting on the uh, the topic, the will to unify. Um, so, if you think about it as a as a purpose behind the uh, conflict uh, of this time, is that as humanity moving towards the. towards unity, recognizing oneself as one, this will to unify draws us closer to each other and it inevitably creates uh, tension because each of us in own place um, is not integrated and is not perfect. And our imperfections as we come closer to each other become more and more uh, recognizable by others. And that's pretty much what's happening in uh, group relationships as well. And that's where like, on the, if we take this, this example of group relationship, what helps to overcome that, yeah, it's the love uh, between group members. It's the, uh, the, those fiery hearts. And when it comes to the level of humanity, it's not that straightforward because, yeah, we are 
drawn into unity by this huge stream of life, this evolutionary force that we're not uh, necessarily conscious of, but it just becomes our reality. And that's, yeah, it's a quite a, a question, what can be that force that helps us to overcome the inevitable conflicts? And definitely one of those, and maybe the only one, the only force uh, that can help to do that is the soul awakening. When each of us discovers the presence of soul energy within, discovers the presence of the Christ energy within. And as the next step, is recognizing the same energy, the same presence of the Christ in the other. DK states that is the purpose of the new education, um, the evolution of consciousness and the developing of the soul awareness um, in, in individuals, you know, starting from the time they're young. And also I think um, that people don't realize the importance sometimes of early childhood and how that um, really develops the sense of self. Starting from uh, early years, that sense of self is growing and must be based on uh, sound, uh, sound techniques and principles um, in the educational system. Um, as you were saying, Alexander, the, the uh, the, the way people feel about themselves and how what they project out in their relationships, um, you know, it's based on that early, often on that early sense of self. Um, that's kind of a, a really, op a real opportunity for humanity to make a huge difference because if um, people are not projecting their own um, fears and uh, their own sense of inadequacy or their own um, uh, fear of, of um, survival, that sort of thing, because, you know, that our sense of self is, is what uh, instigates a lot of the actions we take in the world. For, we're doing some sort of uh, psychic self-preservation. Um, I think that's a lot of what's behind the Ukrainian pro, uh, Russian Ukrainian problem right now, and well, a lot of wars is that psychic sense of self preservation that may or may not be very much based in uh, physical reality. Um, I had a sense of problems between the East and the West. During, during the sense, during the Russian Olympics, because I felt like somehow uh, the Russian leadership was not perceiving itself as getting credit for the work they had done um, and to prepare the Olympics. And it seemed like from then on, this, this is maybe in my imagination, but from then on, it seemed as if there was some sort of sense of not being appreciated and inadequacy and then here we go with a war years later. I, and, and I don't try to pretend that that's everything, but uh, that, 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 was early, that early sense of self is so, so vital to human interaction. Thanks, folks.
what Alexander was saying with the will to unify and the Christ within each, it seems we, we to do any solution, any sort of reconstruction, we see, have to be the one heart, the one soul, the Christ within. I, I, I don't see any other way that reconstruction or reconciliation can happen if we aren't, we don't try to see the others. So we have to be the one heart, the one soul to form any unity. Thank you. We're coming now to time for us to meditate. So before we go into meditation, let us hold the silence for a couple of minutes, reflecting on most resonant seeds that we gathered from our sharing today and from the previous meetings in this cycle. What are the seeds that we would like to place in the chalice and magnetize them and radiate towards humanity? Martha, would you be leading us in the meditation today? Yes, Alexander, shall I begin? Yes, please. So having stepped into the space of silence that lies behind our words, let us become aware of the stillness the heart of that fiery core within. And from our soul link with the group heart, the group mind, and the group soul. In this heightened vibration and love that we hold within our group, we draw closer to the presence of those higher vibrational beings among us to guide and assist the energy and thought forms we magnetize. Let us link now 
with the hierarchy already present, connecting with them through this group effort, building our group onto Corona, linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. Visualize before us the glowing beauty of our chalice, which our work together feeds and fills. This golden chalice is made of numerous threads of lighted golden energy that we have provided as we have shared together in the contemplation of our lighted thoughts. Now, as we place our focus together here, we are motivated by those energies of Sagittarius highlighted earlier. We know that everything has its purpose and that nothing is permanent. Always in a flux of continuous glowing change morphing from the inflow and outflow of the energies which surround us, penetrate us, radiate from us at this time. Sagittarius, ruled esoterically by the earth and on the mutable cross, its arrows of aspiration pointing towards the destiny of humanity. As humanity continues to reconcile duality through the axis in Gemini, to the rider who brings forth unity by will, to all fiery minds and hearts, It is through gentleness and compassion relationships are reconciled. And thus, the archer then reaches yet for another target with her arrow. Let us now reconnect with our topic, the will to unify relationships through fiery hearts. Take a few minutes now in silence to reflect on all that has been said, as well as our responses. We assert the fact of hierarchy to guide, inspire us, collaborate with us as we open our thoughts to a new crystallization, grasping the essence of the purpose of our work throughout this cycle. We will take two minutes for this.
now with love, we pour our efforts into the chalice. Each one unmuting and speaking as you are moved to. We do honor those who choose not to speak, but who silently offer their formulated seeds into the chalice. After each vocalized offering, we will allow each seed to rest in silence for a while before the next one is offered. Let us now begin. I will begin with my seed thought, gratitude and recognition <clears throat> for the group wisdom that helps me to continue strengthening my direction in hopes of opening opportunity for the unfolding consciousness within humanity. Let men settle differences of views by collaboration and cooperation in recognition of the one soul with no resorting to conflict. May the fiery heart of our planet radiate its love into every human heart, bringing harmony. Living in the one heart through the will to harmonize. Unity happens when we see ourself in the other. And this recognition opens hearts. A prayer that the energy of our spoken thoughts um, in this Sagittarian time will help um, people who are ready for the path, to step onto the path, raise their energy from the sacral center, center to the throat, help them um, move from thought to intuition, help people, people's limit, feeling of limitation dissolve, um, that will allow an expansion and an experience of the one soul
nucleus of humanity is now experiencing an expansion of consciousness, which unfolds the love wisdom aspect, healing and resolving conflict into harmony. Now, let us focus on the purpose of our beautiful work today and the seeds collected. Allow them to vibrate and resonate within the embracing light of our group vessel. We magnetize it now with the light of Sagittarius and we continue to invite any others who haven't spoken yet, who would care to. We call upon the hierarchy as we invoke the will to good to hear and help empower this group intention. In unison with hierarchy, we lift our group chalice toward Shambhala, offering it as a group service to the plan. We reach out toward humanity and offer our group service to support the collective evolution of humankind. And now, to seal and complete our work together today, let us sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. May light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ descend on earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills. The purpose the masters know and serve. From the center which we call humanity, let the plan of love and light work out 
and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Ooh. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Michael. We continue our work, and um, as we prepare to enter into the Capricorn cycle, I invite uh, volunteers to focalize our work in the cycle of Capricorn, offering the questions for reflection and leading us in meditation at the full moon and the new moon. So please consider and reach out to us, letting us know. Much gratitude. 